Pussy Willow's daughter. She comments on my monotone as bipolar disorder. Then the call drops. Yo, don't tell me it was time to show up for you to show up late with only an excuse in hand. My appointment over the phone, by the way, which was only an hour, was 30 some minutes late. She started saying, what? Tell me about yourself. Your office asked me three times before the appointment for any therapy or medical records for the doctor to review. Did you get my PDF? I color coded it. I highlighted important diagnosis. And I mean, I, I did the work you guys asked me for. Okay, it's okay. I don't want to fluster you or make you upset. Bitch, stop putting words in my mouth because now you're making me upset. Any and everyone is a bitch, bitch in reference. So don't think it's sexist or anti-feminist. Secondly, she didn't become a bitch until she called me caddy, but that's another story for a different day. Well, I like to look at it after our conversation so I can get to know you in your own words. So what do you want to know? I took some tests online and I think I'm autistic and I want a professional opinion. I find it hard to keep a job. I haven't been able to find a cause for my digestive issues. And I find that sounds created by someone other than myself bothers me. Did you find anything else? Okay, smart ass. After seeing the link of these three, I wanted to be tested for ASD. So we talked some more and I slipped and said friends when what I meant was online interactions mixed with a few people that I know in real life. I'm worried I'll be discredited because I have friends. I backtrack and I explain that my husband, sister, and a friend from high school all scored on the neurotypical level. What would your husband say about you? It depends on what you ask him. I mean, it's like anyone else, right? Like, what the fuck? Bitch. The fuck is she asking me these type of questions for? Like, she's rushing me and cutting me off, and I'm questioning if this is a part of the assessment, if this is some type of New York shit, if she's just rude. What's going on? Furthermore, why did my doctor refer me to this bitch? Why the fuck did you do this to me? Why didn't I review her credentials the same way that I reviewed the new vacuum I just purchased from Amazon or the new cat litter that I picked out for the kids? Am I not as fucking important? Why did I let her disrespect my time and coax me to open up? Yeah, it made me feel like just another brain to study. What happened when she takes her own biases and sees me as a black man, Mary, that's 42 and that's made it this far in life without a diagnosis to not be the poster child of autism? Will my insurance even cover a second opinion? Will this testing drain me too much to even care for a professional diagnosis? Will you subscribe and hit that like button for more videos? Sorry, back to the intake appointment. She comments on my monotone and some of my random emotional responses or lack thereof as bipolar disorder, potentially. Then the call drops. <laughs> When we connect again four minutes later, she doesn't even bother to recap. She just picks up the conversation as if it never dropped. I told her the last thing I heard. She says, now would be a perfect time for me to schedule testing. Call the office and they'll know what to do. We schedule an appointment. It's at 9.30 in the morning. I get an email confirming. They leave a voice message. The appointment is for 9 a.m. I call them back to confirm the time. The email says 9.30 and then their website says they don't open until 10 o'clock. That don't make sense. Over the phone, she says she's not sure why the email said 9.30, but the appointment time is 9 o'clock. She's not sure why the website says they open at 10, but they open around 9. I don't know how that works. And that just has, like, such an unprofessional feel to it. Like, you open around 9, you're a doctor's office. You're telling me to show up at 9 o'clock, but you're saying you open around 9 when your email even said 9.30. Again, all of this is feeling like they fucking with me. Is this your homework, Larry? Look, man, Dude, it please. Is this your homework, Larry? Answer me now! Reading the reviews after this phone interrogation was the only thing that saved me from counseling this appointment. One reviewer said she canceled her son's appointment, the doctor, not the parent, 24 hours before because of family emergency, only to later see her on Instagram island hopping during that same time that her appointment was supposed to be in a photo dump looking like an influencer. Bitch, you? Got me fucked up. Now, this isn't to bash the woman or her practice. I went back and I was able to actually see that same information. So yeah, if you're gonna at least do that, make your account private or don't have it linked to your social media so that people can see and verify that you're lying. In the first place, it wasn't one bad review in one lousy magazine. Knowing how I treat reviews and considering myself an expert for finding legit sources of reviews, I would have looked elsewhere. As I sit here editing, I realize I sound arrogant and not like someone who understands that A, it's not easy to get an assessment as an adult. You either make too much money for some programs or your insurance doesn't cover it as an adult. B, not everyone can afford to pay out of pocket or live in an area where they have a neuropsychologist accepting new patients or it's a long wait list. I understand all of those things and I didn't want it to be the one comment that everyone felt the need to remind me of. See you on the other side. The delay in calling me back after the phone call dropped felt disrespectful. The fact that I had to call her back and it wasn't something that she thought to do on her own, it just showed a lack of professionalism. 
this was still the time that we had booked, even though she was late. And for me to have to call back was something I assumed would have happened in the reverse. From the late call to insisting I send prior diagnosis and medical records that wasn't even reviewed before our appointment, made this whole thing feel like mental gymnastics and some type of stress test. At this point, I'm just hoping everything goes well. I don't know what I should change the night before, the day of, what I should do differently, or what I should just keep the same in my routine. This facility is set up to do testing, but do I need to bring pen and pencil or would they provide that for me? Is this a recorded test? Will there be cameras in the room? Will I be expected to speak on camera? Where the fuck am I getting all these phobias from? If I'm able to get this recording done tonight, I am booking a spa appointment for after the testing. Followed by a pan pizza from Pizza Hut. No, yuck. Hoping that it doesn't suck. But if it does, I'll just order from. Maybe that's that thick.